Tonight on Let's Talk About Health, we ask the question, can a hot temper lead to kidney disease? Also, we share the story of a woman who was diagnosed with kidney disease at just 22 years old. We'll find out how she coped with it for 40 years. Plus, want to know how dialysis works? What you doing? But I'm trying to so basically, get this bad boy started. We discuss all that and more on Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, About Health. Health. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Let's Talk About Health. Mike, I've got a question for you. Are you quick-tempered? Why would you even ask me a question like oh, that? Mm. <laughs> oh, I guess the answer is yes. Uh, you know, like I can be. I, I, I work on it. I really do. Uh, but hey, the question today is, what does getting mad or angry have to do with kidney disease? And with that, let's invite our panel out. We've got such an awesome panel. We have Dr. Marjorie Fu, we have Chua Enlai, and we have Irene Ong. Oh, welcome to the show. Hey. Hi. This Hi. is going to be a madhouse Hi. today. It Thank is. You. It's already hype. <laughs> hello. Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Okay, <laughs> I've got to ask you guys a question. Are you hot-tempered in any... Okay. I, I think when I was younger, mm. uh -huh. yeah, I, I get to be uh, more agitated easily. Yeah. But I think as I grow older, I learn the art of zen. I tell you, I, you know, for me, I'm just so mellow, 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 mellow. But then I have like a break point. Yeah. But I'm trying to work on the Zen thing. Yeah. Because mm. just let it all go. Life yeah. is so much easier when you do yeah. that, the right? Whole... When you're like in line. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't quite understand. I thought we're here to talk about kidneys. Why, why so are you asking me whether yeah, I'm yeah, hot-tempered yeah. or not? So here's yeah. the thing, right? I heard issue? that yeah. being hot-tempered has some kind of link to kidney disease. Does it? Right? That's <laughs> really? Because you get high blood pressure. So How does yeah, high blood pressure Well, let's talk to the doctor. To <laughs> yes, that's why Dr. Marjorie is here okay. with us today <laughs> to answer okay. the question. Okay, so um, when people get frustrated and get angry, or even when you excited after watching a football game and your mm. team won, your blood pressure will shoot up sky high, yeah. right? Oh, that's me. Yeah, mm. but then it's not going to be sustained. It's going to be like, you know, for a couple of seconds and it comes back down. Mm. So unless you have a persistent high blood pressure mm. um, and you're constantly angry yeah. and bad temper, mm. even when you're asleep, so, right. It's not possible, right? So what is, what is that? For some reason, the name is escaping me when you have like persistent high blood pressure, hypertension. Yes. So hypertension or high blood pressure is one of the causes of oh. kidney disease, right? So if you have a very high blood pressure for some other reasons, um, with you know some pathology that causes your blood pressure to go up and cannot come down, then it long term it can affect the kidney. Okay. So just to clarify, mm -hmm. a hot temper does lead to kidney disease, then? Not really, no. No, it doesn't. Right, okay. All right, guys, uh, it's time for a true or false game. Let's see how much we know about kidneys. Okay, first statement. Uh, drinking lots of water is good for the kidneys. True or false? I would say that's true. True, true. true. Drinking water is good for everything. What's the answer? Yes, drinking is good for the kidneys. Yay! Provide, Yay. provide water. Oh. I know you're going to catch me there. Um, <laughs> and I got excited for like a split <laughs> second. Yeah. But if your kidneys are beginning to have signs of uh, impairment, damage, then you, may, you might want to watch the amount you drink. Mm. Because normal kidneys can handle uh, a large yeah. amount of water, but damaged kidney might not be able to. Ooh. So we're talking about in general health, when your kidneys are healthy, you should keep it healthy by drinking plenty of fluids. All right, next statement, guys. Uh, consuming lots of calcium, however you get it, will cause kidney stones. Is that true or false? I was gonna go with You're false. Going... Everything in moderation. So oh. you, your question didn't say consuming, over consuming. So I think consuming... Consuming lots means over consuming. Did you say lots? I said lots. So shall we change? Lots we up. can change, right? Yeah, change. So it's not true and false in that sense because oh, you know, okay, la, true, we la. We know that stones, most of the majority of the stones in the kidney are caused by calcium, right? So um, if you take lots of calcium and you don't drink a lot of water, then you get a very super saturated urine. Then that's where you can get stone. It can be prevented. It can be. If you want to take a lot of calcium, you just drink plenty of fluids. Okay, so the next one. One of the symptoms of chronic kidney disease. Back pain. True or false? One of the symptoms of chronic kidney disease is back pain. Sounds, sounds oh, I, like it. I hope it's false because I have back pain right now. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> well, I think it could be confusing because it, my guess is a kidney pain would be like a sore thing, not so much like a nerve Correct. Pain, you right? can, so you, you, can, you can kind of tell if it's... Doctor? No. Okay, so first of all, if it's a chronic kidney disease, usually more than 99% of the time, it is painless. When you feel pain, it's usually due in an acute situation, like your stone. 
oh. right? Oh. Um, or infection called pyelonephritis, right? Good, good but news then. That's awful. Yeah. No, that's uh, bad news. Yeah. Well, good news yeah. for you. No, yeah. yeah, so there's no sign. Bad news for the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> no, so there's no sign to like forewarn me like, oh, I've got a bit, bit, bad pain, I'm going to see a doctor. Usually by the time you have warning signs, it's Sweet. very late stage, yes. Yeah. Oh. So most of the, most patients find that they have some kind of chronic kidney disease is when they go for an employment checkup, mm. insurance checkup, or Blood national tests. service. How Urine you... tests usually. Urine. The kidneys can regenerate or repair themselves. True or false? I say that's false. False. True. What's the answer, Dr. Mark? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't repair, it doesn't uh, regenerate, unfortunately. Right, right. Yeah. In that case, it, which part of my body can, can Re repair regenerate. itself? Yeah, yeah. Skin? Which, which organ? Your skin oh. repairs itself. Yeah, are there any organs that can skin repair itself? Well, the liver skin. can do a certain extent. Okay. Uh, when liver. you give part of the liver, sometimes you can go back. Okay, so why do we need two kidneys? Basically, you're, you're born, well, people say you are born with a pair of kidneys mm. and one of them is actually so-called spare um, and if you look after it well you know you have no issues about you know your kidney at the end of the day before you know your kidney will outlive you so when the when the kidney works it's like um it's you, not you, like a, a backup parachute <laughs> right no. yeah it, it's just working boot. together in you know in in, in synchrony and um, what it does it it, it it helps the body to to clear the toxins but if you if you have one kidney it will clear half as well, right? Ooh. But maybe half is enough, in a way. That's what the body needs. That's why you can be, you can afford to give away one kidney for a transplant, right? So then, uh, what if you were to get kidney disease? Uh, does it affect one kidney or both of them at the same time? Mm. Well, it depends on what kidney disease you get, right? So let's say this now we mentioned about stones. Usually stones can affect only one kidney, but there are conditions that can affect both. But if you're talking about some systemic condition like diabetes, right? So the sugars in the blood and the blood goes everywhere. Yes. So both kidneys will be equally affected. Okay. Okay, high blood pressure, again, both equally affecting the kidneys, right? Yeah. So the ones that only affect one kidney or the other, say infection, you have an infection in your kidney, usually affects one kidney rather than both kidneys. Alrighty, and let's head on out for a break. But when we come back, we talk about how dialysis works and also the story of a woman who has lived with kidney disease for 40 years. Stay with us. Welcome back to Let's Talk About Health. And now we have the story of a woman who suffered kidney disease at 22 years old. And she went through two types of dialysis and a kidney transplant. Here's her story. One day, I felt that um, my lower limbs, when I press, it have this indentation. So um, I knew that something was wrong. So I went to see a doctor. They did a biopsy of the kidney, and that's when they found out that it's because of an autoimmune disease that caused the kidney to fail. At 22, it, it was um, very heartbreaking. My life changed forever. Before I started dialysis, the doctor told me that either I have a kidney transplant or I would have to start dialysis. Um, without dialysis, my life will, will not be sustained. I actually wanted to do a lot of things. I wanted to travel. I wanted to have a good job. It was difficult that I have to shelve all this plan to put on hold um, because of my uh, condition. So I had a hemodialysis for about nine months, three times a week, about four hours per session before they have a suitable kidney for me. In 1988, Katrina was lucky enough to get a kidney transplant. However, her new kidney failed after 30 years and she was back on dialysis. In 2018, um, I started dialysis. The doctors give an option whether you want to do hemodialysis or uh, peritoneal dialysis. My decision at that time was to go for peritoneal dialysis. The very little that I heard is that dialysis patients are always stay at home most of the time and it's, there's not much change then and now. So it's a misconception. Dialysis patient can still be as normal as anybody else. 
I've been on PD for the last five years. On peritoneal dialysis, I don't need to go to the centre three times a week. I do it at night when I'm asleep. Doing peritoneal dialysis um, has made my life more normal than usual. Um, I'm able to go to work and do the things that um, a normal person can do, um, although a little bit different. 22 years old, that's just, hey, life can just be unfair sometimes. Two-thirds of her life. Yeah. But how do you know if you have kidney damage? Okay, so most of the patients don't know they have it until they go for a checkup. Um, but some patients would, would voluntarily go in earlier because there's a family history, for example, mm -hmm. there's inherited conditions, or if you have a history of diabetes, then you might want to go and check just in case you have it. So, so, so there's targeted tree. screening uh, for patients, who, for people who haven't got kidney disease. Now, when you do have kidney disease, then, um, then we, we do stage it in five stages. They usually say, like, you start with 100%, say 100. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually, stage three is when you drop to about 60%, 60 to We're 30. We're talking 60% usage of your kidney? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that's about there where you, you really have to be very careful. Now, if you go lower than 60, say 40 or 50, that, that's, you're already on a, on, a, on a kind of like autopilot hitting the wall, okay? You have to apply the brakes. There is no medicine that can actually make your kidney better, but it can stop it from getting worse. The fifth stage is the last one where something called the filtration rate is about 15 mils per minute, which is, we should say, about 15% left. That would be stage five. And when you reach stage five, that would be the time where you would, you would say international standards, you qualify to go for dialysis if you have symptoms. Um, in the story that we watched earlier, there was yeah. HD and PD um, treatment. Yeah. Right. What, 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 what do they and need? And she said she opted for the PD. So the difference is that, you know, we, um, PD is using the membrane in your abdomen. Everybody has an abdomen, has a membrane, right? Mm, yeah. And you use that membrane is your dialysis machine. So all you need is fluid that can mm. actually facilitate the transfer of uh, toxins and fluid. So you have a tube, you put a tube into your abdomen that goes straight inside, and then you then infuse the amount of fluid that serves as a dialysis water. Mm. Okay, once it's filled up, you can disconnect. Oh. All right. So you can walk around with the fluid in your tummy, and when you're walking around and do whatever you are doing, you know particles will cross around, the solutes will cross around, and then after a certain period of time, be it eight, four, six, or seven mm. hours, um, the water becomes dirty, right? So because mm. all your toxins have gone through. So what do you do next? You just disconnect it, and then you connect to your bag, and then you let it drain out with gravity. Oh, it'll just automatically drain out. Yeah. Yes. So this one that you're talking about, this is PD. PD. Now what's HD? That, that's blood, right? That's blood, yeah. yeah. So the, the blood dialysis is, is restrictive in the sense that you have to go to a certain area for dialysis. Usually, most patients will go to a center. They go and then they put themselves on the chair yeah. and then they will start the dialysis. So when you do hemodialysis, mm -hmm. it becomes very artificial. So you're only removing four hours of what you are consuming in the last, what, 48, 72 hours. Mm -hmm. So it's a non physiological and not so natural way of removing toxins from the body. So I have a question. Can you just pick um, what you want, whether it's HD or PD, or does it matter? Okay, so when people choose the way, what, which one they want to dialyze, the first one is medical, medical mm. reason, right? So yeah. the doctor will say, this is more suitable for you because you have a certain condition that would benefit from this type of dialysis. Or say, for example, oh, your heart is not strong enough, you know, the, the heart, you probably cannot take the hemodialysis long term. Um, and so, so these are the medical reasons, right? And then they are the social reasons, okay? So the patient says, I want to do uh, blood dialysis, but mm. I, you know, I, I have nobody to take me there, I cannot mm. travel, mm. or something like that, or my veins are no good, because you have to have an access, right? Mm. So, uh. so if you imagine that four hours versus your seven hours of sleeping, uh. I, I, you I don't know, go away it's a no-brainer, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Doctor, uh, would you mind showing us exactly how peritoneal dialysis works sure. over at the demonstration table? Sure. Yeah. All righty, okay. let's go. We've got our PD set up, all ready to go. All right, Dr. Marjorie, can you walk us through it? Sure. So on the extreme right, you can see is on, there's a bag that's hanging up there. Mm. That bag is the fluid 
that will be draining into your tummy when you do the peritonealysis. And bottom of that stand, you can see an empty bag, and that bag is to drain out whatever was in your tummy before you put in. So the next one is the machine mm. that does the same principle of action in out using the machine. So the, this is a big bag because the, the, the machine is going to pump in like two liters or one and a half liters. Wow. So there's more than um, enough for the whole night. This is what you use at night. Use at night, yeah. So yeah, by your bedside, right? And at the end of the therapy, um, this modem mm. is going to send your information to the cloud, and I can see the results of what's been happening overnight. My doctor can see. Yes. Mm. And if there is anything wrong, I can know how many alarms that it has happened overnight. Wow. What were the alarms about? So all this, so, so it gives a patient a little bit more security that somebody is watching. Mm. I'm not just doing it blind. Okay? And this 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 so, guy. So here. this is actually where the body. Uh, works right, so you have to have a tube. So if you want to know what the tube looks like, there is the yeah. um, area here where the tube has to go into the tummy, yeah. and this is the this. tube inside. This is this one goes inside the the, the patient. You cannot see. Oh, yeah. What you can see is only the part that comes out. Okay, mm. that tube will be connected. Yeah, and, and then you can and then you connect, and then after that you let it go in, and then you let it go out, and then you disconnect again. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, and you, you close back. It. When you close. Yeah, it's all Okay. Um, now, just to show you, now here would be how the, the model of how it actually works. Mm. As you can see here, your gut, liver, everything inside. And then, so it's basically covering these organs yeah. with a little bit of this water, right? Okay, so it went, it goes into your tummy, and then now it's going to stay in for a while mm. so that you can have the toxins and whatever you want to come out to come out, right? Mm. So the toxins. So, uh, so when the toxin comes to out, come out, so you can see like coming that. from the body. So the, the, the dialysis also drags some fluid out from mm. you, right? Because yep. patients don't pee so well, so they have mm. to remove some fluid. So, and then it's time to drain out. You just then what? drain it out. What are you doing? But, I'm trying to so basically, get this bad what, boy what, started. So, so all these have fluid, right, inside. So when you, when you want to drain out, you just open the tap and it will just come up by itself. So I think th there was a misnomer. People think that if you do HD, you cannot do PD mm. or vice versa. Mm. But I think we should view those two therapies as complementary rather than, you know, uh, competitive. Oh, yeah, okay. So that's I thought like you, work you just had to choose one and oh, no. that's it. No, no, no. Mm. I think there's a misconception yes. many people yeah. yeah, yeah. OK, we're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to find out how food affects kidney disease patients. See you soon. Welcome back to Let's Talk About Health. Now, we've been talking about kidney disease. Now, we're going to focus on the diet. So, what's good for you and I and what's good for someone with kidney disease is very different. Okay, so with a patient with kidney disease, um, it's a spectrum of the ranges of what your disease stage is, like three, right. four, five. Okay, let's go with five. Okay, let's five. When you go five, that means you probably cannot handle a lot of... Uh, you know, meat, cannot okay. handle a lot of fluids, right? So in that kind of setting, you may want to reduce the amount of protein that you take. Okay. So we would encourage patients when they are, you know, to cut down on their meat intake just before they go for dialysis because if you don't do that, it might speed things up a little bit. So, but then after dialysis, whatever you eat has an outlet now. Correct. Mm. So then you are eating, you can be more liberal, you can eat more. And in fact, when you are on dialysis, we encourage you to eat about 20% more meat or protein than a normal person. So oh, wow. no From a healthy person. at all for someone with... Oh, you have meat. Maybe like, you know, we, we go by 20%. how much meat you have. If, you know, it goes oh. by how much protein you need is about a gram. A gram, a kilo, a gram a kilo nothing. per day. Yeah. Okay. So if you're 70 gram, 70 kilos, you need 70 grams of protein. What what is actually this is, on this yeah. plate? Chicken, fish, tuna, chicken tuna, tuna, and beef. beef. Okay. So fish is always very healthy, right? Yeah. So there's no doubt about that. Chicken is considered as white meat, which is fair enough. It's good. Mm. Red meat um, is also very good. It's very high in protein and mm. uric acid. Mm -hmm. So if you have a gout issue. Mm. and try to limit that and take other forms of protein instead. Because some patients say to me, when I eat red meat or beans or nuts, mm. my gouts flare up, I cannot walk. You oh, know, beans and joint nuts pains. also have uric acid. Uric acid, mm. yeah. This one? What about the fruit? This so the reason we have two types yeah. of fruits here is that they have different content in terms of um, potassium. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. Oh. So potassium is, is one of those things that is quite fatal if it goes up very high. All right. Oh. So again, it's one of those that people in death row, they inject you potassium, then they die. The heart would just stop. So it's as dangerous as that, right? But isn't potassium so, actually good? It's good. Yeah. Potassium yeah. Is good. Your body needs yeah. potassium, yeah. Right? all right? But when you have kidney failure, you are not able to excrete potassium. Yeah. So what do you do? You eat less. Mm. 
correct? Oh, you don't, you don't, you don't just. So eat you're not going to be eating bananas. You try to get back bananas. Yeah. You'll be eating pears and apples. That's correct. Mm. And pears and apples. But why mango? But it doesn't mean that you cannot eat. You eat less. If you really, yeah. really want to eat, eat half. You can have some, but yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah. So, so it's a moderation. So you know that this is high content. I would eat half an orange. So mango has potassium. Yes. Okay. Ooh, There's yeah. another fruit if you I can guess. I never knew that. It has very, very high potassium. Banana. Banana. Durian. Durian. Durians. Yes. Oh, really? High potassium. High potassium. So if you look at durian, it's it's, it's one of those. So it's, it's, when it's seasonal, so our patients come mm. and say, oh, "Why is your potassium so high? Did you take durian?" And I say, "Hmm." Maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. I mean, like, if, if it's so hard to eat, is it like, that's why you just eat bread? Like, forget <laughs> it. No, but it's white bread. White bread's not good, right? Because of the sugar. All the sugar. Yeah. So um, is this a yay or a nay for kidney disease patients? Neither nay or yay. So um, okay. you, you need that, right? Yeah. So it becomes, uh, when you digest it, it's carbohydrate, so it can raise your blood sugar. Uh, if your kidney damage is due to diabetes, right. then you should try and avoid Things that are going to bring your sugar up very high, which oh. is like yeah. very refined sugars, really yep. refined food like mm -hmm. white bread. So if you take brown bread, for example, it takes longer to digest, so the release of sugar is slower. Sweet so potato, things yeah, like Yeah, so that. your sugar won't go up so high. Wait, so then a soda, whatever this is, um, is a big no-no then? No... For dialysis patient, no. Yeah, Because for if, if you look at the if you look at the can, there's this thing called phosphoric acid, yeah. mm -hmm. which is phosphate. Mm. Okay. Again, the kidneys can't get rid of it fast enough. Uh, what is phosphate? Have you heard of ATP? No. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Yeah, so 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 ATP is is kind of like in, within the cell itself. There's this mm. powerhouse, right? They generate power for the uh -huh. cells to work, and the, the the power that you generate in terms of the chemical name is ATP. Is okay. Yeah, yeah, something. yeah. I've read about that. And mm. so every single cell has it, right? And we need it. Okay, but the thing is, when you get kidney failure, you cannot excrete it. It's in the wrong wrong place. In, in a, you know, so so we, we cannot do without phosphate. Well, I'll tell you, but kidney... kidney failure just accumulate too much and it's damaging for the organs. Sometimes. That is, uh, that's it. Just does not sound fun to to have kidney disease, and I feel no, for everybody who is going through it. And uh, I'm so glad that there are great treatments yeah. now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my question is, if we have, if someone has kidney disease. Uh, how do you manage eating out? When you look at a menu, what is the first set, thing? Right. Yeah, like, I, I how do you set. decide on what you should and shouldn't eat? Mm -hmm. um, it is it is difficult, especially if you go and eat with family, but yeah. they, they cannot just all follow your diet, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it'd be tasteless for them. Mm. Stingray with nothing on it, please. Uh. Oh, <laughs> so so it, it, is, it is tough. Mm. So um, I think the dialysis patients do know what they can eat or cannot eat. Mm. So there are little tricks that will tell them in certain days, you know, like if you want to eat this, maybe you should try taking something else that may bring the potassium down a little bit mm. to save you. Because people do go for big, big dinners and, yeah. you know, banquets I, I, and stuff. The eating pattern also changes with the uh, dialysis treatment, yeah. right? So on mm. some days you can eat more yeah. of, you know, protein and on some days you don't, isn't it? If you do the blood dialysis. <laughs> okay, I've got one final question. Right. What is some what what overall advice do you have for people who want to avoid kidney disease, or for those kidney disease patients who want to slow down the deterioration of yeah, their kidneys? Yeah, you're at stage two. Or... Yeah. Okay. So the avoidance obviously would be to go and screen yourself, if especially if you have risk factors mm. like blood pressure problems, like diabetes in family family history G gout of is diabetes. Also? Gout. Don't usually. Um, mm. Most patients who have got an end with kidney failure is because they take painkillers over the counter. Aww. So I think that was one of our big heaves. Oh my God, why did you take those, right? Well, thank you so much to Dr. Marjorie Fu and to our guests, Irene Ong and Tra and Lai. You guys have been great and you guys have been the best. Thank you so much for tuning in to Let's, Let's Talk, Talk About, about Health. Health. Did you enjoy this episode? Well, if you did, don't forget to hop over to our online series called We Need to Talk About This on MeWatch. Every child when they first start walking will look like they are bowling. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Because they're trying to balance. When do kids come out of that phase and, and straighten up? Six to eight years old. Okay. And if they don't do it by then? 